Today is our last day in Europe and we're off to Sweden for the day. We had originally planned to spend two full days here in Copenhagen, but then we saw that Malmo, Sweden was just across the water, so we figured we might as well visit. We were technically in Sweden a couple videos ago for our icebreaker cruise, but we have yet to experience one of its cities, so today we're changing that. Our train tickets to Malmo cost 192 Danish kroner for the both of us and that's one way and the journey should take about 45 minutes and to get there we're going to be taking the train across the Øresund bridge. This is the longest combined road and railway bridge in Europe. It starts out as a tunnel on the Copenhagen side, pops out of an artificial island and then continues as a bridge to Sweden. Sweden. Malmo was founded in the late 1200s and originally belonged to Denmark but became part of Sweden in 1658. It is now the third largest city in the country behind Stockholm and Gothenburg. We're currently walking around the Stortorget, which is the city's main and largest square dating back to 1540. There are tons of beautiful buildings here and we're excited to wander around and see more, but first we're off to partake in a classic Swedish tradition. We have come to a cafe called Lila Cafe Rostariet for our first ever fika. So fika basically translates into coffee and cake break, but it is so much more than that. It is an integral part of Swedish daily life. It's a chance to slow down, take a break, and spend time with family and friends. And it's so important to them that many companies have a clause that employees are entitled to a fika break. And we hear that it can happen any time of the day, but the most common times are 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. I just love this concept. It seems in Europe they have a much better work-life balance, whereas in the U.S. there's all this emphasis on the hustle culture, and we are definitely guilty of that. So we are excited to take this concept back home with us and integrate it into our daily life. For our fika treats, we got a cardamom roll, and then we got a piece of carrot cake. And look at the frosting on this. It is so thick. I love carrot cake, so I'm very excited. And also, this place is so cool. It's in a very old historic building, and it just has so much jar. Cream cheese frosting is on point, perfect mix of that kind of, I guess, bitterness or just like the more savoriness of cream cheese and sweetness. I got a good solid chunk of carrot in that bite. It's nice shredded pieces in there. It's really moist. Oh my goodness. I definitely like their style on the frosting. They don't mess around here. I think the ceiling touch on this, the piece de resistance, is the lemon zest on top. You just get a little hint of lemon on there and that like really takes it to the next level. First impressions, it's sticky on the bottom, which is always a good sign. The exterior has a perfect crunch, but the inside is so soft and dense. And I love the cardamom. It's just so different than having a cinnamon roll. It just, I don't know how to describe the flavor of it. It's just very, almost like holiday and festive. Look at all the sugar they put on top of there too. You don't mess around with the sweet sauce. Yeah, they don't mess around. I've really taken a liking to cardamom on this Euro trip. Yeah. Also, as we mentioned in our last video, Denmark does not use the euro, but the Danish krona, and Sweden is the same way. They use the Swedish krona, which despite the name, is not the same thing. And even though Copenhagen and Malmo are right across the water from each other, we have heard that Malmo is quite a bit cheaper. And so far, that is definitely proving to be true, just with the coffee. This church is the oldest building in Malmo. The 
You might have noticed Malmo has lots of charming historic buildings, especially here in the Old Town area. It is seriously so beautiful down here, but the city's also known for its modern architecture, especially the turning torso. This is a neo-futuristic skyscraper and is one of the tallest buildings in the Nordics. It's a residential building, so you can't go inside, but you can see it from many spots all around town, and it's just a stark contrast from all the really old buildings we're walking around now. We were in desperate need of some non-sweet foods. We just came to the Malmo Salyu Hall, which is a very cool food hall. They have tons of different stands in here. They have cheese, they have fish, they have meat, they have chocolate, they have ice cream, which it's way too cold for. They have poke, there's so many different options. And originally we had planned to get ramen because it's a cold and rainy day. But unfortunately the ramen place is temporarily closed, but we came up with a good plan B and C. First up, we got some delicious looking Neapolitan pizza. Look at the size of this thing. Look at the crust. Man, I can already tell just touching it, that is a pillowy crust. <laughs> mm, whoa, that is super high quality. A plus pizza right there. Good chewy crust. Nice little thin layer of tomato sauce. And then the crust here on the edges here, got a little crunch on it. And again, so chewy and like look how it pulls apart. Oh man, good little burn spots too. And since we are in Sweden, we also got some Swedish meatballs, mashed potatoes, lingonberries, and some pickles. And we've had this dish a couple times already on this trip, but it's been on the overnight train in Finland, and then also the icebreaker cruise. So on like transportation methods, so, you know, a little bit different than this. Mmm, the train one was pretty solid, but this just blows it out of the water. Meatballs are so juicy and tender. Mashed potatoes are so creamy. But what I really like about this dish is just the different, like, flavor profiles going on together. You have savory, you have the sweet from the lingonberries and the tanginess from the pickles. It's just a really interesting combination. We're currently standing in front of the Malmo Castle, which is the oldest preserved castle in all of Scandinavia. You can go inside and visit some museums, but we're just gonna admire it from the outside and stroll around the gardens. There's an actual water-filled, but currently frozen, moat around this castle. I think that's the first time we've ever seen that. I'm looking for the, looking for all the crocodiles. We love to eat and 99.9% .9 of the time we love all the foods that we eat. So much so that some of y'all think we are lying about it. But today we are going to prove to you that we do not always like all the food that enters our mouths. Malmo is home to a pretty unique museum, the Disgusting Food Museum, which seemed way too interesting to pass up. This museum includes 80 of the world's most disgusting foods. And from what we've seen, some of these might gross you out. So we're just warning you now. Okay, as soon as you walk in, boom, hit in the face with a fish smell. So, welcome. These are your tickets. They also work as your vomit bags, just right. in case. The entrance ticket is a barf bag. They also have a vomit counter. The days since last vomit. 15 days. He said it's two days too long, so it's due. <laughs> So this museum isn't like your traditional museum with a bunch of different rooms. It's all one big room and it's kind of split up into two areas. The first area is the exhibit where you can learn about a bunch of disgusting foods. And then there's a tasting area where you can try some disgusting foods. Disgust is one of the six universal emotions. The emotion may be universal, but the foods that we find disgusting are not. Depending on culture and other factors, what is delicious to one person can be disgusting to another. And the goal of this museum is to challenge your notion of what is and what isn't edible. We finally made it to one that we've actually tried. Rocky Mountain Oysters, AKA testicles. <laughs> we had these fried in Oklahoma where it's a delicacy. That's like a thin chicken tender, chicken nugget. 
It does feel a little wrong eating this, especially as a male. <laughs> Some of these foods are obviously disgusting, but then you get to the Pop-Tarts and Twinkies and you're like, what? And lobster and root beer. I love both of those. <laughs> Not only do you get to learn about some of the foods and then try some later, but they also have some stations where you can smell them. And this is Gamle Oles Farfar. It's probably not how you say it. It's from Denmark. It's a Danish cow milk cheese. Give it a go. Oh, I'm kind of scared because it just kind of smells gross in here, so I'm not sure what to expect. <laughs> like, actually, is making like my throat feel weird. Like, I might. I'm okay, I don't throw up. I haven't thrown up in like 15 plus years, so I'm gonna be okay. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna feel gross after this. Even though we might be grimacing at some of these foods and their smells, one thing that we love about travel is that it opens our minds and has made us more eager to try new things, even if we don't always love them, to hopefully better understand a culture. Just be really glad that you don't have smell of vision for this part of the video. I'm starting to get nauseous <laughs> looking at this stuff. But we've now made it to the end and it's time for Disgusting Bingo! So how this works is if you try all the foods on this bingo card, including this million Scoville hot sauce, you get to spin a wheel and get a prize! And on the back it actually says, Acceptance of Consequences. The chili I'm about to try is, oh, it's 9 million Scoville, Scoville among the strongest on the planet. I'm just gonna say, we have a very, very long travel day tomorrow, so I think we're gonna just be a little cautious with the things we try so we don't feel horrible the whole day. Is that a cop-out? Probably, but I think it's a legit excuse. It's like a combination of cheese and butter, and it's sweet and like vanilla ish. Cheers. The flavor itself is really not bad. It's not bad. No. At first it's like, mm, but then it starts coming through. It's really, it's actually pretty good. It is, right? that's good. It's like salted caramel cheese. Right? And I love salted but caramel. Yeah. We are trying durian next. And we've had durian before in Thailand. And uh, we'll just play a clip of what we thought of it there. <laughs> At first it kind of tastes like onions. <laughs> they kind of got sweet. I think it's better. <laughs> But some of y'all commented and said that you thought our durian was maybe overripe or just not a good one. So we're trying it again. Yeah, it's not horrible. That one was definitely not, not bad at all. That was actually pretty good. I'd try it again. <laughs> well, it smells like urine. It smells like straight up urine. It's kind of like a Parmesan with steroids. So this is called Licorice Devils, and it's from Iceland. We tried salty licorice in Finland. This is the extreme version of it. Oh, this one way worse. Oh man. Oh, uh, and the tingle on the tongue from all the salt. Oh my god. I'm a little scared now because I didn't mind the one in I will Finland. Uh, I will so with you. All right. Mm. <laughs> that's so good, huh? That burns. It gets better once you chew it. It's sweeter. But that initial reaction was. Ooh, ooh. The final item that we're tasting, or I guess I we should say I'm tasting because Adam's refusing to do it, is this hot sauce. It's the hottest one on hot ones. Okay, so just on my tongue, no lips. This is only for challenge. I mean, this is a lovely one. And people eat it, like, will I survive? I mean, Yeah, my throat's burning a little bit. That's a good one. I still have the salty licorice in my mouth, too. There's a lot of things happening in my mouth right now. All right, I'll do it. I'll do the first one. That's it. Woo. Man, it's crazy. It's a tiny, tiny amount. It's so hot. Two minutes, you're not going to feel anything. Cheers. That's better. Thank you for all of your help and your guidance through the world of disgusting foods. Yes, that's what I do. I would give you a high five, but your gloves. I will change, take off the glove, not the glove. That's a different thing. Thank you. My mouth is still on fire. My mouth is still on fire, and my burps probably for the rest of the evening are going to taste absolutely like, horrible. Like fermented oh, shark. That was an experience. It was actually a lot of fun. The look on my face for most of that time was. Uh, kind of not happy, <laughs> but once we got to the tasting area, it was actually a lot of fun. We tried so many more foods than I thought we would. We were a hard no on the bugs. Yeah. Uh, we just don't 
I don't know. I don't see the benefit of we it. We don't really want to do that right <laughs> yeah. now. And then we were a hard no on like the really hot sauces. But we tried yeah. pretty much everything else. Like, yeah, a little bit of everything. Um, can't say I liked much of any of it, but <laughs> we did. You know, the very first thing, that one cheese, I would, I would, I kind of want to go get some. <laughs> I wish we could get it back because it was actually really good. Yeah. Like a caramelly cheese. But yeah, that was. I, I'm, I'm just proud of us because we tried so many more than we planned on. And, and I'm known as a picky eater. So yeah, that was, yeah. That was that was. Oh gosh, wow, it's, so it's windy. getting windy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a really fun experience. It really was. But I think now it's time to go uh, find some delicious Get food. Get something Not tasty. disgusting food, although <laughs> I don't know. I'm still feeling a little queasy, so. Yeah, maybe give it a few more minutes. <laughs> we're gonna do some slow walking and then yeah. we're gonna get some delicious food. <laughs> Malmo is a very diverse city with residents coming from over 170 countries, with many of them coming from the Middle East. And because of this, falafel has become the food of Malmo, specifically falafel rolls. And just look at this thing right here. It's like the size of a newborn baby. <laughs> it is huge. So a falafel roll is obviously falafel, tons of veggies, lettuce, tomato, pickle, onions, and then some sauces in there. There's a chili sauce and a dill yogurt sauce. And then there's like a schmear of, I think like a garlic kind of sauce as well. This thing is huge. And then it's all wrapped up in a fresh made like pita bread wrap. They were baking them right then and there, They're taking it out of the oven, flipping it over. This thing is super fresh. Oh yeah. Good crunchy falafel, tons of sauces in there, fresh veggies. This is incredible. It's so huge. I'm going to devour this. They had a bigger option and we were like, ah, oh, we'll go back and get another one. I don't know if we will be able to. This thing is huge and it's so dang good. This might be my favorite thing we've eaten in a while. Even though the falafel is fried, it's just so fresh tasting. You've probably noticed in many of our videos here in Europe, we haven't had many vegetables and we've missed them so much. So this is kind of just like having a delicious salad with some fried falafel just wrapped up. And those sauces are off the charts. Opposite of disgusting, let me tell you that. Yeah, I know what you're thinking out there. Well, of course it's gonna be good. You just came from the Disgusting Foods Museum. No, this is good. Here's this is one. really good. One of my favorite foods we've had this whole trip. Yeah, yeah, me <laughs> the too. The whole month we've been here. Might be, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Might be my favorite falafel ever. I haven't had a ton of falafel. Oh, my I mom know. makes good falafel. Know, She's gonna be upset. Oh, well, they're fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> also, the guys working in there, outstandingly friendly so friendly so nice yeah that just makes the whole experience even better yeah, yeah they were wonderful shout out to them Usually prefer to spend more than one day in a city but we don't get to travel internationally as much as we would like so when we saw how easy it would be to do Copenhagen and Malmo in two days we knew we had to visit both and I am so glad that we took a day trip here. All right, and just like that, we are back in Copenhagen and this marks the end of our one month here in Europe. This trip was so special and so magical. We got to have so many brand new experiences like visiting Christmas markets, sledding at the highest point in Germany, trying a Finnish sauna and ice swimming, seeing reindeer living off grid outside of our van, witnessing such limited daylight and even polar night and cruising on an icebreaker. I think what I'm most proud of for this entire trip is that we survived the cold. We are from Texas, and as we mentioned in the first video of this series, we've never really done a true winter trip. And we experienced the coldest weather of our lives and saw more snow than we have ever seen. And while at times we were pretty dang cold, we really tried to embrace it. I truly never thought that we would be able to function in temperatures that cold. I didn't know we'd had it in us. This was kind of a risky trip for us, but 
I'm just really, really proud. And I think knowing that we can survive in the cold will open up a whole new world of possibilities for future travels. But tomorrow we are heading back to the US and we are so excited to see our girl Kona. We have missed her so much and I know many of you have missed seeing her as well. But you may be wondering, what's next? And the answer is, we uh. don't know. <laughs> and it's a really weird concept for us because we normally have the entire year planned out and this is the first year that we seriously have no idea. And I think really our goal for this year is just to take things slower. We are very, very exhausted. We've been going hard for three or four years now and every year we try to have some big grand plan or a goal that we're working towards and it's just kind of burnt us out to be honest. So I think our plan for this year is just to take things slower and just kind of see what really excites us and just not have such a strict schedule or plan and just, I don't know, just see what we want to go do. See and where just, the wind takes us. Just, and just go do it. But <laughs> yeah. what we do know is that we are going to be hopping back into the van for the late spring and the summer and we are heading west. So we'll see you there. And maybe by the time we're doing that, we'll have a better idea. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> It's our last day in Europe and our best dog day in Europe. We've gotten to say hi to two dogs and I have slobber all over me now. <laughs> it's okay. It's worth it to say hi to a dog. A little gross though. <laughs> I told Adam, let's not film the cheeses because we love cheese. I did not like the first one. Not good, not good. Very bad, <laughs> bad cheese. Yeah.